Check out these tools I've made to help design 3D printed model aircraft using Blender and its awesome geometry nodes. There are download links in the description and you can either just open the supplied Blender file and start editing or you can import specific sections into your own blend file. With these tools you can, interactively and in real time, edit the plane shape of the wing using curves, add dihedral using a curve, import airfoils from that files downloaded from the net, set the root and tip airfoils and interpolate between them using a curve. Control the twist in the wing using one curve for the amount of twist in degrees and another for the twist centre. Add thickness to the wing with one curve for the top and another for the bottom. Control the density of the generated mesh with separate controls for tip, root, leading and trailing edges. Adjust the wing root size and orientation to match a fuselage and shrink wrap the wing to the fuselage. Cut ailerons and other control surfaces into the wing. Add ribs that automatically conform to the shape of the wing. Control the layout and shape of the ribs with curves. Use parameters to specify details like the number of ribs and the gap between the ribs and the wing surface for thin wall printing. Set the shape and size of the structural holes in the ribs. Use vase parameters to offset the ribs for single-sided or double-sided vase printing. Extra wide ribs are possible. Support structure for carbon spars with parameters. Some other bits and pieces. Similar tools for the tailplane and the fin. Enough flexibility to allow for flying wings. Produce a streamlined glider fuselage using guide curves. Alternatively, make a fuselage using sections from a plan. In either case, adjust the mesh resolution as required with separate resolution for the nose area. Add a canopy cutout with a locating peg using a single guide curve. Add internal bracing structures to the fuselage. Select sections of the model for STL file export. Slice, test and go back and iterate the design. Export the design to the free XFLR5 Vortex Lattice Analysis tool for aerodynamic analysis. What it doesn't do, of course, is detailed modelling like cockpits and air intakes, etc. But Blender itself is actually great at this. Like Blender, these tools are free. They're open source, small and easy to download. The geometry node networks are commented, well, at least a little bit, and you can modify them to suit yourself. For documentation, I'm releasing four more videos showing how it all works in a bit more detail. You will have to know your way around Blender, of course, but there are hundreds of tutorials for this, including the famous Donut tutorial by Blender Guru that can teach you the basics in a few hours. Well, that's the overview. Now, if you'd like to try this yourself, I'll do a 10 minute run through on how to download the software, do some basic editing, export an STL file and slice a part of the wing. I think you should be able to follow this even if you've never used Blender before. First, we navigate to the GitHub site for the 3DP plane design file. The link is in the YouTube description. Now, click on the link after the words Blender File Download to download the latest zip file. I'll navigate to the download directory and unzip the zip file. There is one blend file and two zip files for add-ons, but we'll concentrate on the blend file for now. Now, let's go to the blender.org website and download the latest copy of Blender. 
you will need to use a fairly recent version to be compatible with my design tools. You can just download the suggested version, but I'll go to the download page and download the portable version that doesn't even require installation. Windows, Linux and Mac versions are all available. With my net connection it takes about two minutes so I'll just speed this part up. Navigate to the downloaded file and extract the zip file and then I'll run Blender from the executable file in the extracted directory. I'll accept the default settings and from the file menu open the 3dp plane design file that we downloaded earlier. I'll also enable some screencast keys so that you can see the keystrokes that I'm making. I can rotate the model by holding down the middle mouse key and moving the mouse. Alternatively, I can use the gizmo at the top right of the view area. I can pan around the scene by holding the shift key and the middle mouse key and moving the mouse. I can select the top, side and front orthographic projections by using the numeric keys 7, 3 and 1 or we can use the gizmo on the top right of the view area by selecting the desired axis. The window to the top right is the outliner this is where the structure of the Blender file can be seen. Just check the filter pull-down and make sure that the Disabled in Viewports icon is enabled. Then we can use the Viewport Disabled uh, icons to turn off sections of the model that aren't currently required. Depending on the speed of your PC, for good performance, it's probably best to work uh, with only the necessary geometry showing. I'll turn off the tailplane, the fin and the fuselage for now. I'll expand the wing collection and we can see the different objects here that make up the wing structure. Then I'll expand the shell collection and in here are the objects required just to generate the external surface of the wing and the actual wing object is this wing v2 object. Lower down here on the tab with the wrench symbol are the modifiers for the object. Modifiers are Blender's method of non-destructive editing. The wing object has a number of modifiers and the first is the geometry nodes modifier that actually generates the wing. Again if I turn off some of the other modifiers we'll get the best performance. I'll go to the plan form collection under the shell collection of the wing and I'll select the leading and the trailing edge uh, guide curves. I'll change to edit mode from this pull down or I could have used the tab key. It also works to swap between object mode and edit mode. I'll select the vertices at the tip of the wing and I can move these around using the Translate gizmo from the toolbar. Alternatively, if I use the G key, uh, G for grab, it will let me interactively move the vertices. When I'm done editing, I'll change back to object mode. Up on the toolbar uh, are some selections that change the viewport view, including X-ray vision, and various options of wireframe or solid view or different render options. The solid view is probably the best for editing. Let's re-enable all the modifiers and additional objects associated with the wing. And I'll just adjust the shape of the wing uh, back something like it was before to suit the existing aileron cuts and carbon spar placement. Now let's select a section of the model to export to the slicer. I'll enable the slicer modifier on the wing and find the slicer master object in the outliner. Then I'll select the wing 1 section and I'll enable the master slicer and we should see that only a portion of the wing is now visible. I'll hide the servo object with a H key 
as we don't need to export that and select all of the visible items. Now from the file export menu I'll choose export STL. We'll choose the selected option to only export the selected items and set the scale to 1000 to convert millimeters to the slicer units. Now we need a slicer. Let's download a copy of Cura. It's also free and open source. We'll run through the standard installation options and select a common 3D printer. Then we can import the STL file that we've just exported. I can change the orientation. And let's just hit the slice button and see what happens. Well, for a start, we have infill selected by default. I'll just remove that and try again. Now we have too many walls. I'll set the wall line count to 1 and slice again. It's getting better, but the ribs are too thick by far, so I'll just adjust the top and bottom thicknesses to fix that. Now, it's looking pretty good, but I see the slicer hasn't processed the cable ducting section. And I can see from the preview that it thinks that the top of this section is intersecting with the wing surface. Let's duck back to Blender and just alter a parameter which specifies how far away from the wing surface the cable duct should reach. I'll change it from 0.7 of a millimetre to 1 millimetre and we'll export it again. Yes, that's fixed the problem and you can see one of the main benefits of a parametric design solution in how easy it is to go backwards and forwards between Blender and the Slicer and improve the design without starting editing from scratch. Well that's it for this video and if you'd like to find out more details check out the other four documentation videos that I've made using these links.